Hey YouTube, this is Rubix33 and this is the second part of my PhoneGap tutorial series. Alright, before we get going, i got a few things to say. One is, I want to apologize, I've been meaning to get videos up sooner. That's what I wanted. I wasn't trying to promise, but I uh, really did hope to get videos more up. I am working full-time as well as studying at university full-time, so I, my time is quite limited. Furthermore, I need to clear up some things with how to get everything set up. So, we'll go do that. And before we do that, I also want to clear up this what this tutorial series is for, who it's for. Uh, it's for anyone that knows uh, HTML, CSS. You don't need to be masters of it, but at least be fairly familiar with it, know how to make a web page, you know, know how to do styles, as well as some programming, any programming. Just a little bit of programming will really help. If you don't know those things, I highly suggest uh, tutorials, there's like W3 Schools, uh, has really good stuff for HTML and JavaScript. There's a lot of tutorials out there, a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of material to learn that. So go out there and learn that and come back. Uh, that'll really help you to not struggle with what's going on here. Um, okay, so that's about it. What I have to say about that. What we're going to do, I'll load up Aptana and we'll, we'll get going on setting that up. Right, so we had Aptana and maybe went through went through this a little bit. So right click new project and we'll just do web project, it don't matter. Yep, phone gap. Okay, now we have a phone gap. And then we're gonna get the materials. Uh on my YouTube page, if you go down here. Oh, I saved this, but anyway. Go down here, right here is the basic resources. Has everything you need, the Cordova, the license, and two other files. Download that, unzip it, and then copy the files into here. So once you have the files, it'll be like this. You can just copy these files. You actually copy everything but the license. Unless you want to redistribute it, then please do that. <laughs> Sorry, I got a cold, so. All right. So now we got this, it'll have a template. So your basic layout for a one page one page phone gap app using jQuery and jQuery mobile. I'll change this in the download, the links for the Cordova, which I used I had it in a different folder, but that may cause issues when you try to build it. Alright, there we go. Alright, so now we got this set up, we got Aptana set up, we got code and the libraries but now we need to be able to run it and I don't have Chrome up here so when we need Chrome I do other stuff so go to run configurations click on web browser right click new name it whatever you want you can do Chrome Ripple and then wherever Chrome is uh, typically it's a C drive programs 86 under Google Chrome application Chrome.exe. There we go. And then for arguments, also on the YouTube page right here, just copy and paste that. Oop. Hang on. Save. Copy and paste this little blurb. Put that in the arguments. Apply. And then that'll fix that little problem, like I said. Now I'm going to delete these other new configurations. There we go. Now we're good to go and just click apply. Close it and then go to organize favorites add select all you gotta select because it doesn't show it and then me because I have other ones I'm gonna need to move it up okie dokie there we go so now I can run it so we can go to our events one well we'll go to the template one and then open it with Chrome Ripple and it should just automatically emulate if it doesn't use right click enable oh this is the first time so I could do 2.0 I suppose won't hurt nothing. There we go. Blah blah blah. It works. If it doesn't, you can always just right click and click emulator and then enable, disable, whatever you want to do. So there we go. Now we have that done. And then once you're ready to build your app, you can go to build.phonegap.com. And I'm going to sign in here quick. Uh, Then here's some apps I have. Uh, here's my Machinist Toolkit app. This one's private. This one was still public. 
um, that so you get an Adobe account and then you can uh, what you do is you upload their your app so an account will be empty in here and you click new app and then if you do private you're limited I think I have a higher quota for private apps that I can do because I've been grandfathered in because I've had this account for a while since they really kind of just started I thought you can upload a zip file oh wow I had a lot of private apps cool anyway I guess I can only have one private app otherwise you have to have an open source app they've changed it so you'll need a github account which is a repository basically a place where you can put code up for other people to download and everything up there is free so if you're putting some up there you don't want other people to have or you have you know you can still have your own licensing but it's still gotta be open source so so you can do build your open source apps from your github account which I don't have any otherwise it would list them here because I actually have an account but I haven't put anything up there and then you can build it and then it'll build it for all all of the phone platforms but iOS because you'll need an iOS licensing key it's a hundred dollars to get a developer license and then you have to put in the key and then you're good to go for that so there you go and then once you build once it's built like the events one here you can just scan the QR code that one you won't be able to do. you can scan this one and then it'll automatically download or on some phones you just click what what f type of phone you have and there you go so that's kind of the quick rough way of the whole process of code getting your tool getting your tool set up getting some code building it releasing it so we'll we'll be going through that more as we get going but let's just kind of just show you guys how how that works all right so if there's any questions just comment below about getting ripple chrome set up we won't need a link i originally thought we were going to do a link but i realized this is easier if you guys are following along in aptana all right so look at the template this is just like a template you can use and our events .html. When you do upload to phonegap build.phonegap.com just like a server, you need to know your main you only have one HTML page, but your HTML page needs to be index.html. Otherwise it'll fail. That's just the way it needs to be. So alright, so we got our page here and then we I added some code. Now we're gonna do events so when something happens. So I did a script here. You could link, you know you could just do a script and link to our own JavaScript file if we wanted to, but then we can't. Then we can't reference this because you can't reference JavaScript in JavaScript and yeah. So we put the code down here in the script tag. Some people put the scripts up there. It doesn't really matter. This is just my preference. So what we do is when we don't want to do anything until our device, our app is ready. On normal web programming, we would do something like window dot unload equals and then like in it all or something which is whatever our main function is here because we're doing an app it's document dot add event listener is what we're using so basically what we're doing the second is well I guess we could do a window that on load too and then we could be calling a function that calls this but once it all loads it's gonna be it's gonna call the JavaScript so it's going to document that at event listener device ready. So we're waiting, for, we're listening, we're waiting till the device is ready. And then when the device is ready, we're going to run this function on device ready. And this is just placeholding because you can actually put another function if there's an error. So, like, you could put on error and then it'll run that function if there's an error. So, on device ready. So when the device is ready, we're going to go into this function device ready and we're going to add more listeners. So once we're ready to get going, we're going to add listeners so we can handle other events such as pause. So we're going to add event listener, pause, and resume, and they'll be going to the pause and resume functions. And then I added a little alert here. The alert is to make sure that just to make sure that it's working, that it's calling the device ready. Um, I'll, I'm still changing the download stuff, so I'm going to add comments like, you know, uh, starts listening, starts uh, waits, or I'll say waits for device to be ready. Handles p 
pause event. There we go. Handles resume event. And then I'll add some more later, but there you go. Now, if you're wondering, like, if you're really new to JavaScript, it's a lot like other scripting languages, but it is different because you're in your web program. And there's HTML, you might even do PHP, Ajax, all that jazz. Ajax is actually um, not a pr uh, language per se, but a technique. So, the whole, the interesting about the document is it's a property. So, event listeners is a property of the document object. And then add is is lowercase, and then event first letter. It's called camel case. If you didn't know, it's a uh, how programmers do variables and stuff. It's just something to keep keep a pattern to everything. So that's lowercase a, and then uppercase every word after that is uppercase the first letter. It's called camel case. It's Hungarian notation. So like. If you have, if you're labeling stuff like a button, you would, the button ID or the name would be BTN. You give it like a two or three. Well, that's uh, camel case Hungarian notation. Use this camel case, and then it'll do like a two or three, sometimes four more letter abbreviation, like what it is a button or a text box, text box, and then the name like button, open new window or text box enter comment or comments see like that so just something to to know why why it's actually built into JavaScript that way so way programmers keep everything the same they also program constants with all uppercase so you know that 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 variable shouldn't be changing so so now we're going to run this and now that we have Chrome Ripple all set to go, it automatically it go and it says, oh, device is ready. So boom, our device is loaded and ready. If we go over here in Ripple, you know, there's all kinds of stuff we can do. Go to the right, on the very bottom there's events. You click on here and you can choose what event to fire. Pause. Boom. Paused. So it, it gives a little alert that we know that the events are working. Boom. So, there we go. That is our little rough, quick way of making sure everything is working. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I don't always explain things the best. I program, but that doesn't mean I teach. So, doing my best. So this is this is all the materials you need. It's just right on the links. I'll be posting other links below later on if I'm doing other resources or using other uh, libraries. Like, might even do all kinds of stuff. We'll do all kinds of stuff, and if there's more materials, libraries, or stuff you guys need, I'll post a link. I posted a link and I included the Cordova with my stuff. You be, you're be you welcome to go over to the phone gap and download that, but then you'll have to go through a buttload of folders just to find the Cordova.js. This is like the version 2.53 or something. It's plenty new for what we're doing. Um, but the problem with if you download from phone gap, it's like a 30 meg download versus this is like kilobytes. So you can download my stuff, it's instant even if you're on really slow internet versus if you downloaded PhoneGap, it would take forever um, if you're on slow internet, so and it's just easier, so yeah, you guys can play with it here, it should just work I will be, I'm constantly changing the content, so if you try to for one second, you try to download it or you click the link and it broke just wait like literally like 30 seconds or a few minutes uh, that just means I'm updating the content of those links, trying to, you know, I had the license in here, and then I had it in a different folder, and I, I'm I'm picky, so I'm just trying to make it better for you guys. I might add stuff too. I probably add different folders though, and add different links as it goes. All right. Well, until till later, uh, this will be the end of this tutorial. Have a good day.